So, remember when everybody was complaining about just how small the Switch's library was? Oh, how far we've come. Now we're at the point where there's just too many damn games. We've already had so many come out this year, and there's still way more to come. And even a whole bunch that are supposed to be coming soon, but we still don't know a damn thing about. There's a lot of mysteries in this video. This video is brought to you by our friends over at Satisfy Gaming. Their new and improved Switch Grip Pro has everything you want from their previous design and more. It has the offset right handle, which makes playing in portable mode way more comfortable. No more cramps. Owies. And the new angle and slimmed down right side are perfect for all game types. It's got rubber inserts, so the Switch never actually touches the plastic grip. If you were concerned about scratching before, you can forget about that now. It can even be docked in one of those portable dock enclosures if you really wanted to. Just take it out of the grip, you, you lazy. You can pre-order yours now at Satisfied.com, and while you're there, check out the Elite Bundle, or my personal favorite, the Slim Bundle with a sleek, form-fitting case. That's Satisfy, S-A-T-I-S-F-Y-E dot com. All right, so the first game that I want to talk about isn't really an exclusive, but I promise that it's the only one, and it's a really interesting case, so I wanted to talk about it first. It's Super Meat Boy Forever. This game was supposed to come back in April, but it got pushed back until forever? I'm a big fan of the original Super Meat Boy because, you know, action platformer. This one's unique because it's an auto-scroller. Instead of holding right and Y the whole time, you just have to jump. It's a lot more intuitive than it sounds. I got to try it at PAX East this year, and it felt really solid. Team Meat decided to push back their original late April launch date for some fine tuning, but since then, there's been no word. Late April turned into summer 2019, which turned into Q3 2019. As far as I could tell, this game was pretty much done, so it's weird to see it pushed back so much. I'm all for games taking their time. It's better to release a good game eventually than a broken game to meet a launch window. I just hope that this game actually comes out because usually delays like this, where they don't really say anything, are not a good sign. But I'm looking forward to playing this game eventually. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about a bunch of games in date order. So depending on when you're watching this, some games might be out already. So I'm gonna put a bunch of timestamps down here so you can just skip ahead in the video, depending on when you're watching this, or don't, because I can use the retention time. Astral Chain comes out this week. It's being developed by Platinum Games, directed by the lead game designer of Nier Automata, Takahisa Taura, with the help from the guy who created Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, Hideki Kamiya. And Astral Chain seems kind of like a mix between all three of those third-person action games. You're a cop with a baton that turns into a gun and you get this f***ing weird robot thing that's chained to you that does some crazy sh It's very Japanese. The first revealed trailer I saw for this game had me excited and I couldn't quite put my finger on why at the time. The reason it stood out to me was probably because of its similarities in design to games like Bayonetta and Devil May Cry. Honestly, the more footage I see from it, the more confusing the gameplay looks. It's probably one of those games you just have to pick up and try for yourself. There's going to be many different ways you can play it. You just have to carve your own playstyle. The reviews are actually coming in right now and they seem pretty favorable. It's got a nice solid 88 on Metacritic. And yeah, it seems like it's all about developing your own playstyle. There's a bunch of different combat types and legions, which are the things that are attached by your chain. Skill trees and whatever. Astral Chain will be out August 30th, or this Friday at the time of this video's release. Damon X Machina is a game that many people are excited for, I guess because it's a mech game? They released a playable demo way back in February so that they can solicit feedback from users on how they can improve the game. And then, the game was not good. Other people seem to disagree, but I felt like it was beyond saving by any feedback from the general public. It just felt like garbage. 
Well, it seems like all of the changes they made based on that feedback is changes to how the game mechanics feel. Changes to the movement, changes to the speed, changes to the controls. They even added motion controls. Hopefully they release another demo when the game comes out so we can see for ourselves if the gameplay has actually improved before we drop $60 on it. But hey, at least the music's great. Damon X Machina comes out September 13th. That's my birthday. Buy it for me. Now, I don't want you to think less of me, but I've never played Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. But that's all the more reason to be excited for the remake on the Switch. It'll give me a reason to dive back into this classic game. I really liked A Link to the Past, and this top-down perspective has given me similar vibes. I played it a tad at E3, and it was great. I'm all for the Playmobil-looking-ass characters. It's cute as hell. Some people are concerned that this is an original Game Boy game that's trying to fetch a $60 price tag. First of all, the original cost $30 on the Game Boy, and adjust that for inflation, and that's $53 now. Second of all, this ain't an old game. This is a modern game. Look at it. And third of all, it's not a small little tiny Game Boy game. It's a 15 hour long game, at least. But not including all the stuff they're gonna add to this one. Sure, you can compare it to Breath of the Wild because that's also a $60 game, but really, that game should cost $100 because there's just so much packed into that game. I'm fine with the $60 standard amongst games right now, and that Nintendo tax has been around since forever. New Super Mario U for the Switch costing $60 when the original cost $50. That's hot garbage. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening comes out on September 20th. I'm gonna play it then. I'll probably stream it. It's gonna be a good time. This is the time where I get to shoehorn in a way for me to talk about Gun Vault, because Gun Vault is great, and guess what? I lied. It's not the only... Uh, Meat Boy wasn't the only exclusive. I'm gonna tell you, it's not an exclusive. Gun Vault isn't an exclusive, is what I'm trying to say. It's Gun Vault's not. Gun Vault Chronicles Luminous Avenger X. It's actually X. I don't know what any of that means, but I'm a big fan of the original Azure Striker Gun Vault, and this gives me a chance to talk about that again. So here we are. Azure Striker Gun Vault is basically what would happen if they had continued the Mega Man Zero series. It's developed by Inti Creates, the developer behind Mega Man Zero, Mega Man ZX, and also Mega Man 9 and 10. It seems like Inti Creates was sick of the stagnation in the Mega Man series and decided to let themselves loose with their own IP. The level design is all right, but where the game really shines is the boss battles. They're tough, but fair. It usually takes just two or three tries before you get the pattern right. I'm not usually one to like super hard boss battles, so you can trust me when I say these boss battles are actually really fun. Ooh, I did it, all right. That was rough, that was a rough one. There's also some added mechanics that differentiate it from the Zero series. Gun Vault has an electric force field that has all sorts of different mechanics. It makes you hover. It blows up certain projectiles. It also hurts enemies. And after you tag enemies with your gun, you finish them off with the force field from a distance. Honestly, I got pretty damn far in the game before I had this force field system completely figured out. But anyway, that doesn't matter because in this one, you play as a completely different character named Copen, who has the ability to tag enemies by dashing into them. Then his bullets just home into them. The story and the dialogue for the first game was pretty terrible. I'd assume this one is no different. The trailer isn't really very reassuring. Adepts, Septimus, Minos, Sumeragi Institute of Human Evolution, EX Weapons Idle Mode, Pro Awakened Mode, 1000 Kudos Points. But you're getting this thing for the gameplay. And if you like the Mega Man X or the Mega Man Zero series, I am positive that you will have a good time here. <gasps> Gun Vault Chronicles comes out September 26th. I'm not saying that whole name again. I spent a long time hating on Luigi's Mansion. It's one of the first games I remember trading in as a kid. I thought it was hot garbage. In hindsight though, I think I was just mad that there was no Mario game out for the GameCube at the time. Every system prior to that launched with a Mario game. Why is this one got to launch with Luigi? Anyway, I've heard nothing but good things about Luigi's Mansion 3. Everyone's telling me I need to try it out, even Will 
had made a pretty convincing case after he tried it out at E3. Anyway, I'll be giving Luigi's Mansion 3 a shot on October 31st. Ha, I get it, that's Halloween. I'm really excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield. I've been a little bit out of touch with the franchise recently, but playing through some of the back catalog last year and playing a lot of Pokemon Let's Go this year has really rekindled my love for the franchise. AJ from Fanatics 4 will give me sh every time I mention Pokemon in a video because I'm not as much of a dweeb as him. And he says I say I say things wrong, so I'm gonna reluctantly get uh, let him let him talk. What? Listen, I don't want to hear anything, Mister. I'm learning Japanese to learn anime. If I wasn't here to talk Pokemon on this channel, you'd look dumb, and we both know it. Oh, are you talking to me? Are you done now? Did you do it yet? Did you do it already? Despite all the national decks controversies going on at the moment, I would say that Pokemon Sword and Shield are looking to be fitting introductions for the core Pokemon series on home consoles. As they're known to do with this series, Game Freak has been inching their way ever so slightly to the open world game that fans have been begging for since open world games have become a concept with the introduction of the wild area. A new addition to the franchise that serves as a central hub to the Gala region, it's sort of akin to how the overworld works in Dragon Quest XI. Here we'll be able to encounter wild Pokemon in the overworld that all coincide with the weather conditions that change on a daily basis. You'll also be able to meet up with up to three other players, whether they be random or friends, to take place in battles against each other or trades, as well as participate in max raid battles, another new feature that has trainers team up to battle against giant Pokemon with increased stats called Dynamax Pokemon for a chance to catch them. And perhaps the additions that Game Freak sees as the biggest deals, Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing are the new Mega Evolution Z move equivalent. That sort of feel like a fusion of the two. I honestly don't find those features all that interesting, but I also admittedly haven't played them yet. So fingers crossed when I do, my mind changes. If you liked hearing me talk to you about Pokemon, I made a whole new video all about the things that Pokemon can stand to learn from Dragon Quest XI, another upcoming Switch game that Bob somehow neglected to talk about. You can find that video at youtube.com slash 4 or linked in a card or something on the screen. I got a chance to play one of the gyms in Pokemon Sword and Shield and I had a lot of fun with the silly mechanics like Dynamaxing your Pokemon. I'm excited to try raid battles with friends. It's gonna be a good time. Pokemon Sword and Shield comes out November 15th. Expect a lot of streams for that one. Now we've got a bunch more stuff with release dates that are just kind of up in the air. There's Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, which is not a, it's not an exclusive. I'm not sorry anymore. I'm not sorry that this isn't exclusive because I had to talk about it because look at this trailer. From ages long ago, miasma has blanketed the world. That sounds pretty serious. You should get that checked out, buddy. Crystals keep the deadly miasma in check, but the crystal's power crystals. is not eternal. An inhaler, dude. Check your health insurance. If we had no crystals, miasma would consume us all, correct? What is happening in this world where everybody has asthma? And there's not a single inhaler. This is not a pretty looking remaster. It's probably just the game ported over with better textures, to be completely honest. We haven't heard much about it other than it's coming. And now it seems to be coming this winter. Game Freak isn't just making Pokemon, they're making a game called Town. Or is it called Little Town Heroes? Like this trademark filing says. Well, anyway, all we've ever gotten about this game was a short 45 second trailer in a Nintendo Direct back in September of last year. It seems similar to Pokemon in that it's a turn-based action game. Instead of Pokemon, you receive help from various town folk. If it's been this long since we've heard anything about town, I doubt we'll be seeing it in 2019. I'm sure it'll be pushed back to next year. Normally I would say spring, but we literally haven't seen anything and it's been over a year. Not even a new trailer or any new gameplay footage. We got some stills, but that's about it. So maybe like summer or winter next year. But keep it on your radar because Game Freak knows what they're doing. Obviously. Animal Crossing New Horizons has been highly anticipated for a long time now, and it's been in development since before the Switch was even released. So this release is a very big deal. I know a lot of people who lost themselves in Animal Crossing A New Leaf for the 3DS, and even more people who lost themselves in Stardew Valley. So I'm sure 
this is gonna have a similar effect on those people. At first glance, it looks like an expansion of Pocket Camp, the mobile Animal Crossing game. So I'm sure this will have some connectivity, which would be a great way to keep your game going when you're away from your Switch. Animal Crossing New Horizons was pushed back from a late 2019 release window to a March 20th, 2020 release date. So brace yourself for the time to be sucked out of your life by Tom Nook next spring. I don't want to include Metroid Prime 4, but I feel obligated to because people are going to write it in the comments. But that was never given a launch window. All we ever saw was a title screen. And then Nintendo came out and they said they had to scrap the whole game and they're remaking it with the help from Retro Studios. So we're not going to see this one for a really long time. There's also the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is in development. Yes, that is the current working title. You're not gonna see this one for a long time either. Not until at the very least next holiday season. I just wanted to talk about the games that are coming out soon. I didn't want to get this far into the weeds. And then there's all of the SNES games that should be coming to Nintendo Switch Online. This was never actually confirmed by Nintendo, except that these FCC filings for this SNES style controller seem to bring some truth to this theory. It'd be just like the NES controller that they released when Nintendo Switch Online launched with those NES games. As for what games we'll see packaged in with this, well, why don't you check out either our podcast where we talk about it, or if that's just too much, you can check out the clip from the podcast where we talk only about the SNES games we'd like to see in Switch Online or the ones that we think they will bring because there's gonna be some licensing issues. It's a whole mess. And that's it. That's all of the games that are coming out relatively soon that I can think of that we're waiting for to come out onto the Switch. I'm sure that I left out plenty. And if you wanna let me know about it, you can leave it in the comments below. You can add me on Twitter or any and all of this other social media garbage. As always, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule is usually in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. We got Wolf Den live every single Wednesday. That's our live podcast that I was just talking about where we can chat with each other. We got live streams all the time over on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. I play a lot of Mario Maker and a little bit of Smash Brothers. You can support us here on YouTube or over on Twitch using Twitch Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, it's free. And if you do that, you can get into our supporter only Discord. You get private chat time with us. You get videos like this one early and you get to play multiplayer games with us about once a month. We just played Mario Kart with everybody and it was a good time. But of course, the most important thing that you can do is just subscribe. That's easy. Or share this video with a friend, a friend who has a Switch and is waiting for some new games to come out because we, we got you. Thank you guys very much. Give yourself a very good week.